I don't know about you, but as a child, I found it very difficult to wait, to wait for things to happen. And probably extends to my adulthood too, but I think more particularly as a child. You know, when you're a child and you're wondering you know, how long before Christmas, is it here yet? You know, wondering about when you get the presents. And even, even with Easter, you've got a long period of Lent, you know, and you can't wait when the Easter Bunny is going to get here and you get your basket of candy. And of course, when it comes to birthdays, once you celebrate a birthday, you have, why do you have to wait a whole year? You know, why can't you have a birthday every two weeks? You know, so don't ask an adult about that. Adults will be different you know, or, you know, of course, then inevitably it's like when you're going on a trip, what's the classic line, are we there yet? Are we there? You know, over and over again, this, this whole idea of waiting. Well, today we celebrate the ascension of the Lord. We enter into a kind of a waiting period. At least that's what, it, that's what it appears to be like for the first disciples of Jesus, knowing that of his imminent departure back to the Father in heaven, Jesus decides to tell his followers, you know, a few final things, maybe kind of like a final pep talk before he ascends into heaven. And so he tells them that now he expects them to be his witnesses, and that he preaches repentance for, you know, be preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sins to all the nations. And in case they were wondering how all this was going to, to happen, he says, but you will receive power. You know, you will receive my power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And it, it, sometimes I wonder why Jesus needed to say that particular thing. Why couldn't he just tell them, you know, you preach the good news, you know, you're going to do all these things, my power will come upon you. You know, you know what was it that you needed to continue on with about telling them about that the Spirit was coming? You know, was this to kind of calm their fears? You know, after all, Jesus was leaving them and knew the disciples would have the courage to carry out his plan. But why did he specifically say this? You know, and, and you know, I can't say with certainty because anything we speculate about what's in the mind of God is just an educated guess at best. But I would venture to say that the reason that, they, that he told them specifically that the Holy Spirit was coming so that they would be ready to receive the Spirit, so that they would be open to the Spirit, so that they would be transformed by the Spirit. So in other words, anticipating the arrival of the Holy Spirit would actually help the Spirit to become more fully alive in their hearts. Because without this knowledge, they might think, well, is Jesus telling us we'll have the power, but we have to do all of this alone without God's direct help? Sometimes theologians disagree as to whether or not we can resist God's grace. But one thing is certain, whether or not God can or can't get us to say yes to him, it seems that he never wants to force himself upon us. The choice is always ours. The choice as to whether or not our hearts will be open or closed, whether we'll be willing or unwilling, or whether we'll be tender or hard or open to change or rigid, something that we get to decide. Because we always play a part, because the decision is ultimately ours. And so many of the best things from God, many of his blessings, many of the gifts and graces that can be offered to us will be diminished in a sense because of our own stubbornness, of our own self-centeredness, you know, maybe our own spiritual laziness or lack of faith. And it's not because God's power is weak, not by any means. It's because we are weak at times. We are caught up with our own needs and desires, and we're deaf or disinterested to the way that God wants to work in our life because God only wants the best for us and our world. And so by telling his disciples that the Spirit is coming, Jesus is making sure that they are ready, that they are ready to be filled with the very life of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, who will give them every good thing that they need to continue his sacred work. All they need to do is wait and then they need to be ready, and then they need to be open. They just need to be willing to be changed within. And then, 
There is no stopping the love that they'll be able to display and pour out upon every person they encounter in every corner of the world. So the question is, we talk about waiting, they were waiting for the Spirit. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for God to change things around us? Are we waiting for God to get others to get their act together? Are we waiting for God to give us something better in our life, maybe a better job, maybe more friends, maybe once our children can be more obedient or considered, maybe we're waiting for God to get our parents to stop nagging us, or our spouses to appreciate us, or our bosses to stop criticizing us. Are we waiting for God to provide us with better things in this world? In other words, are we ultimately waiting for God to do something for us? Or are we waiting for God to do something in us and through us? Because that makes a difference. It makes a big difference. You see, if we allow God to change us on the inside, all these other external things, all of these things that we spend so much effort on won't matter quite as much. Not that we shouldn't try to improve things in our life that need improving, because we should. But when God is alive and at well and at work within us, these other things will never get the best of us. They won't determine whether our life is good or bad or meaningful or pointless or joyful or complete drudgery or despair. Our struggles and our disappointments will not win. So the question today as we celebrate the Ascension, what are we waiting for? Or, and worse yet, are we waiting for anything or anyone? Do we believe that we can still be beautiful and loving people? Can we believe that we can be full of hope and peace and kindness and joy and mercy regardless of whatever paths our life have taken to this point? God wanted to do some wonderful things in the hearts and minds of his disciples. And that Holy Spirit would make it possible. All they had to do was be willing to wait, to be ready, and to be open. And thank God that they were. And he wants the same for us. Will we choose the same?